Well, hello, Spidey fans. It's your favorite neighborhood spider friendly neighbor. It's me, Von Fry, probably the most detested movie critic, the super villain of critics on YouTube. Anyhow, I am going to be doing a commentary track for 2002's Spider Man, starring Tobey Maguire, directed by Sam Raimi. Yes, I said that out of order. So this is actually going to be on Stars. They currently have the deal worked out for the Sony Pictures. So their tentpole franchise is Spider-Man. Not a whole lot else, but they, they have movies. They're just largely obscure. Before we get started, I'd like to give a little shout out to my friends over at CalderaLab.com. You can use my promo code FRY15 and save 15% off the good. The base layer, uh, what was it? the clean slate, and the upcoming the deep. These are facial washes, moisturizers, serums, masks. Give it a try. I'm gonna have links to all my other special offers for my viewers slash listeners below. The being at this is stars. I'm we're gonna cue this up ten seconds into the film. So we got a black screen after the stars typical television this logo this film is rated pg-13 for reasons so this will essentially be like if you want to do this with a dvd these are designed to be for streaming but in this case you might might want to try your dvd blu-ray of spider-man we're going to hit play now i am also drinking dwayne johnson's energy drink tonight and i'm probably going to spill this on me this is Zoa in the 100 calorie, contains, I think, real sugar version. I could only find this at Walmart. And this is their orange mix. I do appreciate the, I guess you could say it's the original Marvel production logo. They don't use the same one for the MCU. They switched at one point. Choir vocalizing in the subtitles. I have not seen this movie in a while, but I thought it'd be interesting to do the commentary track on because I've I've seen it at least three times, but it's just been a while. Danny Elfman's score. Try to keep in mind how they're going about launching, getting their feet wet into the we want to make a lot of money with a superhero movie. They did Blade. I can't remember if that was 97 or 98. I think it was could have been 98. But you could make the point that Blade's their first superhero movie. I'm eating popcorn also. And I don't think they were counting on it being a huge hit. Not by any means. But they had other offerings out there. I mean, a comic book character, not necessarily a superhero. In Punisher, some stuff kind of got stalled and didn't go to theaters. I think there was Fantastic Four and a Captain America. And then they want to come out big. Fox is making a little bit of dough with the X-Men. What other Marvel properties can we work here? Sony had acquired the rights, the, the movie rights. Oh man, that's some bad looking smoke. <laughs> Look like some, some little template you get in Final Cut Pro from like 2006, but uh, Sony negotiated a deal. I think they spent like $20 million to get the film rights for Spider-Man. And when they brought a guy down to from Japan to the Marvel people to negotiate this in like 97, they said, hey, you could have all the, all the Marvel characters for like $50 million. I, I may be off with these figures, but... Guy calls back to HQ in Japan, says, hey, they, they said we could have everybody for 50. The executives back in Japan, they say, nobody cares about any of these characters except Spider-Man. Just get Spider-Man. Sony had the keys to the castle in their palms of their hands, and they dropped them. They still got Spider-Man. They still had some money. And this was the first superhero movie to make Titanic-esque mu uh, money, I said music, money uh, for a time. 
$800 million theatrical gross in first run. I mean, the, I think this might have been the first movie to have one of those $100 million opening weekends. Oh, yes, we have a high school bus, and hardly anybody looks like they're in high school. Flash Thompson, played by uh, Deathstroke, right? I feel like there's a lot that they get wrong here, but they made this movie relatable to people. This was the first superhero that was relatable to get a movie. If you think about it, Batman, no way relates to that. Blade, who's a half vampire, right? But, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, just an average kind of geeky kid, can't talk to girls, okay. Not what I envisioned of Peter Parker, really. Because uh, most of my knowledge of Spider-Man came from the 90, I think it was 94 Spider-Man cartoon on Fox. I mean, look at the guy's grand, just... And also, Tubby Maguire does not look like he's in high school. So Kristen, Kirsten, 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 Kir, Kir, is it Kirsten? Kirsten. Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst, I don't know. She doesn't look much like she's in high school either, though... She'd been closer than just about anybody else here. She's not waving at you, Goofy. Oh, we got a vintage rolls. Let's go. I mean, hell, even James Franco don't look like he's in high school. Well, William Dafoe doesn't look like he's in high school either. But you know what? It's largely fine because they don't spend the entire movie in high school. Just a, We're getting a little bit of that origin out here. I think this is the movie that caused so many superhero films to be origin stories. Because they're looking, hey, Spider-Man made $800 million of a damn origin story. Let's origin up this shit. Before Spider-Man, they were selling tickets to the people who knew who the characters were. The X-Men. We didn't have an origin story for Professor X or, or Wolverine, right? We, Batman didn't have an origin story. Batman Returns continues not having an origin story. We have several Batman films, four of them without an origin story. Blade, not really an origin story. I can flashback, kind of. But Spider-Man, let's start with the origin and rake in the money. And then the problem is, each time they want to redo Spider-Man, you have to see the origin again. And it's gotten to the point where I have not watched the newer films with the little British kid. I, I'm just not terribly interested in his version of Spider-Man as I've seen him in the MCU so far. Hey, hey, Mr. Stark. Hey, how's it? Shoot. I think there was a lot of efforts at miscasting in this also. And it's going to sound kind of strange to you. But Kirsten Dunst, not a redhead. Tobey Maguire, not the body for Spider-Man. I think that, granted, I've only seen The Amazing Sp by the Yeah, not The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but uh, mm, why am I forgetting his name now? The British guy that plays Spider-Man in that one, that's a good Spider-Man. He has the humor down, he's got the physique, uh, the, or rather the shape for the suit. Andrew Garfield. Tobey Maguire, no one really had much issue with until after the film. I think at the we weren't that familiar with him going into this. Most people probably just saw him in Pleasantville. But you're looking at his buddy over here. He's going to be like Green Goblin Jr. James Franco, now he looks like what one would envision Peter Parker looks like, I would think. I don't know why everybody acted like Kirsten Dunst was the hottest thing ever. 
to be frank with you, and I can say it's because she's a little older than me, Kirsten Dunst was at the height of her powers in Jumanji. That's when she was at her hottest. Yeah, clip that, show it to the YouTube people when they come for me. I'm not so sure why they tried to put all these square pegs in the round hole for the casting of this. For what it needed to do at the time, it worked. But when you refine the formula and you can find people that can better play uh, cinematic versions of the characters, I think you, it opens the door to looking back at this and being like, oh, maybe we didn't quite hit the mark. Remember, this is an origin story. We don't have a lot of Spider-Man action front-loading this movie, do we? I have a sip of the share of orange right here. I would say that the orange Zoa, not the most imaginative flavor name, it's probably better than original. Original has a bit of a... Uh, a little Red Bull, a little Monster, a little bit of green tea about it, but this orange tastes more like orange juice to some degree. Hey, I wanted to get a picture of you because you got the cleavage sticking out, but now you... I mean, come on, she's got some weird styling. I didn't think her clothes looked good in 2002. It was green granny sweater with the purple. Come on. Kind of having some fun here, making some faces for the yearbook picture, right? Well, he's shooting real film here, guys. You don't see that these days. Oh, the spider's coming down on his hand. Oh, we got a spider bite. And the spider's on the ground. Could it bite somebody else and turn them into spider people? The world may never know. Oh yeah, we got the double helix over here, so we know it's scientific. And there we go, a Sony plug. We have a Sony screen. Get a good prominent view of that. Sony really likes inserting the company logo into those Columbia TriStar pictures after they acquired them. To an obnoxious degree in the Resident Evil films. I don't think in most of this movie people mind that much. And here we are at Oscorp, where we have the general. Well, I don't really see how this is going to help her, but this strikes me as pretty absurd. We have a glider we want to introduce into the military. And we have superhero serum, of kind of. In a sense, the Green Goblin's like took the super serum that made Captain America, but he was a bad guy. And his serum may have had some delusional side effects. Back to formula? I don't like hearing that. Yeah, folks, this is what happens when the owner slash shot caller of the corporation is also the scientist. Ends up experimenting on himself. He's got a competition who are testing in two weeks. How are you going to beat that? Rush it to, to testing? Edg edging him on to do something dangerous. This does take place in New York City. A lot of superhero films, and up to this point, took place in fictional locations. Spider-Man has always lived in New York City. Again, gets a little bit more of that relatable edge. I mean, I completely forgot that Uncle Ben's even alive at this point. I don't even... Did they not have an Uncle Ben in the Spider-Man MCU BS? I think they probably started with him not having an uncle. Because he's, like, introduced in 
um, Captain America Civil War. He's not even introduced in his own movie. Cliff Robertson, right? It's Uncle Ben. I can't say Uncle Ben now. They had to change that name over at Walmart. I had to get some Uncle Ben's rice. They just had generic Ben's rice. I have some homes on the outskirts of New York City. And wouldn't you know it, he's got a cute neighbor. I think that the this trilogy doesn't really address what came of Peter Parker's parents. They clearly left him because he was annoying and just too wimpy. In this film, you can kind of see the Spider-Man transition. It's like, oh no, he's going through puberty. And you have weird th sequences where it's like, Aunt May knocks on the door. What are you doing? Uh, nothing. Go away, Mom. I I'm, I'm watching wrestling. Yeah. I don't think that he's actually having visions of this sequence we're seeing. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're having Lawnmower Man-esque visions of spider bites taking effect. Of course, his, his origin into Spider-Man coincides with Green Goblins, right? Just great coincidence that the hero is introduced at the same time to deal with the villain. Oscorp will be dead if they don't get this government deal. That is some great management right there, guys. We got a big, big ass corporation, and it all hinges on one deal. I'm gonna drink this and shatter that glass. I actually do like William Defoe as the Green Goblin. I, I kind of thought that Hobgoblin was maybe more the thing, and then Green Goblin was like the ancestor. I wasn't really sure at the time of this movie which of my goblins I should have had priority on, but William Defoe looks like a goblin in the same kind of way that Ron Perlman looks like a caveman. So I would say they did a heck of a job casting Green Goblin here. Does his facial appearance matter that much, considering that they then put him in a helmet and then you have the face-covered Spider-Man and him conversing, looking like Power Rangers. That was a criticism of the film levied at the time. Oh yeah, another Sony monitor. And another one, back-to-back. -back. Getting that sweet Sony logo in the shot, I'm sure that came from the higher-ups. So he needed the liquid and the gas chamber. Whoa. Uh-oh, that's a ViewSonic monitor. This could be bad. Look at the crash zooms. That's Sam Raimi working a little bit of that uh, magic of the evil dead. And, you know, as I go through it and I'm thinking, I didn't really like the first the evil dead that much. But as as an indie film, it does pretty damn well. I think you could add the evil dead to the un, uh, unspoiled for trilogy list. For a while, we had Die Hard worked pretty well for that. Back to the Future films do work. I would say Austin Powers works. 
one could say the Evil Dead does it. Am I getting a little bit of muscles? Oh, the back in the days when the PR coming from a movie was related to the body transition of the star. Robert De Niro put on this much weight. Tony McGuire had to hit the gym to become Spider-Man. Everybody laughed their ass off on the big change line. Oh yeah, you can bet that he looks out this window a lot. Checking out MJ. Mary Jane Watson. I feel like a brand new me. Woo, look at that little move, yeah. Watch some gymnastic tapes there, Uncle Ben. Don't mind me, feeling great. If only Norman Osborn could have realized that all he needed was a spider bite and then just get everybody bit by the same damn spider. Yeah, have his super troops all ready to go, wouldn't he? Spider-Man's origin is so repeatable, it's kind of shocking there aren't Spider-Men all over New York City. I guess in a way that makes Spider-Man into the Spidey Spider-Verse thing possible. Like Even though it's multiple versions of Spider-Man... I mean, you could have them all together. You know, what's to stop this spider from biting people? Oh, the halcyon days of seeing a Saturn vehicle in the background of a movie. I don't think those plates said New York on them. Those plates, the plates around here are a little out, out of tune. Possibly not shot in or around New York that much. I probably should have looked that up before doing the commentary. Mm, my hands are sticky. Again, going with the hormonal imbalance of puberty. That is your movie. It's a, it's a story of puberty, guys. That's Spider-Man 2002. Oh, look, Dad had the same kind of reaction here. Only he had an innocent bystander to whoop ass on for passing out. And he's having the visions too, kind of. Hey, well, he's actually having the visions or the memories. I guess visions are like memories of things yet to come, if you think about it. The flight suit and the glider have been stolen. Could be mistaken, but I don't think that... Maybe it's high schools, but not elementary schools actually have names in New York City. I think elementary schools, it's like something 102, you know, they just assign a number. Wow, great reflexes. Beyond great. Then make a Chinese acrobat blush. Wow, you showed off your amazing reflexes, Parker. Now I'm looking at your eyes. Oh, oh yeah, oh. He just has such a weird grin, man. How do you guys feel about them working Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire back into the Spider-Man? You know, we had the Marvel Cinematic Universe threat, and now we have to deal with a multiverse threat. That's the only direction you can go beyond. We've upped the stakes so high in the comic book movies that it's gotten quite absurd. I think everybody knew Spider-Man didn't shoot Spider-Web as a side effect of being bit by the spider. That in some way he needed to make the, the webbing, and it doesn't, because why would it come out of his wrist? It'd probably come out of his asshole, right? 
every all these little gags are getting huge laughs with the audience. Opening weekend, I was working in the video section of a grocery store, and everybody was talking about this movie. There was people who were like, hey, you see that movie? There's like a fight every minute. And, uh, and uh, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I got to go check out Spider-Man. I check it out. There's not that much fights. It turned out everybody was talking about Deuces Wild, which opened opposite Spider-Man, starring as Stephen Dorff, and it made like nothing. But there was a shit ton of people interested in, in the possibility of renting that want to know when, all this stuff. Speaking of Stephen Dorff, we have that bullet time-esque effect right here. Uh, you know, early 2000s, every movie's got to have a bullet time. I think through the 2000s, everybody trying to ape uh, The Matrix. And that was actually quite decent. Yeah, the CGI paper airplane, you know, doesn't quite work out, but... Doing a little bit of composite right there for this. Um, the reflexes and the timing, the editing here, have a pleasantness about it. Like, this looks really well storyboarded. It's, it's quite clean, too, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't you like... It's so relatable, yeah, the bullies getting the tables turned on them. Gets more food dumped on him. Because remember he had food on his back. Which I think we didn't see much of there. Oh, it's that guy who's an extra in everything. He's standing, standing right by MJ. He's a little freaked out because... Some people are admiring his abuse of power. You can see there, Harry. Harry seems to be digging it. MJ, not so much. He's thinking... He's already thinking the great with great power comes great responsibility beforehand here. He didn't really need Uncle Ben to die... Because he's already got the idea, I, you know what, I need to get away, I need to train, understand my, my stuff a little better. I don't really like how uh, MJ's upset by this. It, MJ being upset by him doing the wrong thing would be a big enough motivating factor for Peter Parker to be a good Spider-Man. Okay, the wall climbing here, a little sketch. Are we still saying sketch? I always found the CGI in this to be rubbery. I, I couldn't really buy that Spider-Man was doing most of the stuff you see him do in this film. Uh, he just it, you could you can tell these days, and it was more apparent when people would just turn into a CGI figure. Go web, go. How do I get this stuff to shoot again? More puberty. Ooh, he said Shazam. That's bold. If I push these fingers down, then it looks like I can... How much web can his body produce? Not a ton of danger for Spider-Man to swing and have an accident because spiders, uh, you know, the strength of the spider, the capability to fall from a pretty great heights wouldn't really bother them that much, right? Now, if he has a passenger he swings with, he probably needs to up the ante on uh, carefulness. Oh, the squat little houses. They have to paint the place green, really. The 
Michelangelo, meatloaf in the oven. Why was it Michelangelo? Was he, was he supposed to be doing the painting, but they ended up doing it because he, you know, he wasn't being responsible, right? I'm not paying that much attention to a film I haven't seen in well over 15 years. Oh no, she's got some uh, abusive parenting over at her place. So, so sad. Oh, he's not dressed that dorky now, is he? Is is he already getting some fashion sense along with the spidey sense? I think this movie kind of coins the term spidey sense, whereas it's supposed to be spider sense. I'm not sure if he said, if he says spidey sense. My spidey sense is tingling in this, but it's supposed to be my spider sense is tingling. You know, maybe it's like, um, Luke, I am your father. One of those movie phrases that gets misconstrued over time. And everybody, Luke, I am your father. When it's like, no, I am your father. Maybe he says spider sense and people pick up spidey sense and run with it. You know, it gets in the advertising, whatever. Now her shirt is very 2002. Girls were into the spaghetti straps and the bear midriff. Oh, I want to be an actor, but they want me to not be an actor. Oh, well, you were great in school plays. You played Cinderella and all the... Talking up her acting ability without her ha without us having to see it. Probably a smarter move than where this goes with her being on Broadway. And us having to suffer through it. He's getting that puberty, the puberty feelings. I tell you, there was two movies based on my life. Spider-Man 2002 and Transformers 2007. Both films, hero guy tries to get a car to impress the girl. That's what he does. He has something better than a car. He has web slinging action. But look, this guy wants. This guy comes to pick up Mary J. He's got a. He's got a prowler. Being silver, it's probably a Chrysler prowler too. Shoot, this would have just about wrapped production about the time of this movie. And he's like, well, hey, so. Got, don't scratch the leather. Let me talk about the sound system. She's like, cool car. And he's like, yeah, I need a car. Uh, some of these are not going to quite cut it. Porsche 911 S Turbo. Whoa, geez, that's a bargain. 911 S Turbo? That's not the way that should be listed. And I don't think that was a Turbo S, but if uh, I'd have to look that back and freeze frame it. But, I mean, it's like, it said, what, 36000 on a card that's now going for a quarter million? So, I, I kind of like the montage effort here. It, this is comic book-esque. I think Ang Lee really took the transitions and the, and the act of the montage active in the scenery of the comic book film to new heights in Hulk. Uh, that said, I don't think that he had the capability to make the Spider-Man costume. Maybe he can make the first draft. Maybe he can kind of draw it. I mean, it's like, what is his talent? He's supposed to be a science geek. Oh, but he's also the photographer. Oh, well, he's also a costume designer. Let's uh, work in that product placement for Dr. Pepper. Yeah, 
maybe uh, maybe slingshot in that uh, lamp wasn't a good idea. What are you doing in there? Uh, uh, nothing, Aunt Maya. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting dressed. Uh, you're acting so strangely, Peter. Uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> and if she sees the web, it's not what you think. The Daily Bugle. This isn't Spider-Man looking at the bugle, thinking, hey, I can get a job as a photographer. This is Norman checking in on the news. See, kids, back in the day, we had this thing called the newspaper. See, and you had to wait until they made the newspaper to find out what happened yesterday. I'm going to the library. We want to make sure he's going to the library, so I'm going to take him. Gramps' ride's in pretty good shape. We don't know you anymore. You're putting off all your stuff. All your chores. You get into fights at school. It's got to be hard for the parent figure to understand if their kid is the good guy or the villain. The signs, the propaganda are pointing you towards a villain, right? Not doing your chores. You hang, Maybe you're hanging out with the wrong kid. We don't see him hanging out with anybody, but... I want to get all my maturation becoming a man talk out of the way before I get off here in a minute. Just because you can beat him up doesn't give you the right to. Here we go. With great power comes great responsibility. Is that a trailer line? You know, I don't think I saw the trailer for this more than once, maybe. I think I saw the trailer post September 11, 2001, at which point they wanted to work out having the World Trade Center in the building, or in the building, in the movie. And the trailer I saw didn't really had me thinking, wow, Spider-Man finally, it was kind of like, oh, so it's like a CGI cartoon guy. I'm Spider-Man now. Okay, whatever. Didn't I didn't really take it too seriously. Here we go. Macho Man Randy Savage. Snip to a Slim Jim. He's playing Bone Saw. In the comic books... The wrestler Peter Parker takes on to try to get some money. I don't know if he was trying to get a car to impress MJ. Probably not, because MJ wasn't introduced. It, 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 I wonder if at the very beginning, Gwen Stacy's there or not. Anyway, the wrestler's name was Hogan. And that kind of kind of has me thinking, okay, so Hogan's a name for a wrestler. Why don't we call him Hulk Hogan, right? But we have sort of his rival, Randy Savage, playing the role. And this is... Randy Savage 2002 is one jacked grandpa. Check out the Oakley Shades on um, uh, Sam Axe from Burn Notice. Oh my god. Is that... Is that future Academy Award winner? Uh, it, the... Yeah, it is. Uh, from, yeah, from. She's he. She's the guy he signs up with. Ah, uh, why am I not remembering names? I didn't expect this to happen. Bruce Campbell, and, mm, yeah, the the gal who won for uh, the the help.
Man, could this be her first movie? This is, proceeds to help by a good distance, doesn't it? $3,000 uh, $3, paid the human spider. He wants to go by the human spider, but Bruce Campbell's got a better idea. Man, those if those shades don't scream early 2000s. Terrifying the deadly, the amazing Spider-Man. I think we might have some WCW Nitro Girls here as sort of a accompanying on the side. This is one of those movies that doesn't seem to quite understand how pro wrestling works. Thinks, thinks it's a shoot when it's a work. One of those sort of scenarios. This isn't cage fighting. It's, I mean, it's supposed to be, this is a wrestling ring, and I'm not quite sure this really makes sense to a smarter audience today. I say it's not cage fighting, but they bring the cage down, which kind of, kind of benefits Spider-Man in a way. Oh yeah, if you thought fighting Flash Thompson was hard, wait till we show you a guy who's five inches shorter. Three minutes of playtime. And I like what he's doing with the fingers. They made a good choice on choosing a wrestler. I don't think it makes... It's the most apparent choice. Probably, yeah, I mean, I could see totally getting a guy that's younger... Yeah, in his prime, right? But I think Macho Man, I mean, he bulked up big at this point, so I wouldn't say he's past his prime either, but he is way bigger than he was in his prime. Oh yeah, totally fair that the gals are just handing him crowbars. Oh, that is quite a bump there. Well, you don't pin him. You don't really count to three. You sort of odd modified rule set here. If I recall correctly, oh, so he does not get $3,000. Because he didn't go the full time, right? Fine print, said three grand for three minutes. You pinned him in two. He didn't pin him at all. He did not pin Bonesaw. He was ruled knocked out. I missed the part where that's my problem. That'll come back to bite him. Oh, we got a robbery. Here we go. This is the moment that changes everything for Spider-Man. Thanks, kid. You let him go. Oh, yeah. Cops are totally about civilians interfering with robberies. I missed the part where that's my problem, he says to the promoter who didn't give him his cut. How could this have gone different? If the promoter was like, you know what? that it, it Look, if I'm a wrestling promoter in New York City, all right? And we just had a guy put down the skills that I just saw. I'm not giving him $100. I'm signing him to a long-term contract. 
he could have at least given him the three thousand. Be like, look, can we see you here uh, like next Friday? You know, like. And then being on the good side, hey, yeah, I, I pretty much just got a job. Screw, screw becoming a photographer of the Daily Bugle. I'm a, I'm a wrestler slash superhero. Probably doesn't even need to become a superhero because uh, Uncle Ben doesn't get shot because he's able to apprehend the guy. Uncle Ben does not get shot, propelling him to now interfere with cr criminal activity. So he has to go after these guys, right? And the tears from Peter Parker, I'm not totally sure if I'm buying this. Had his car stolen by the guy who uh, used it for a getaway, right? Tragic coincidence, but in some ways that's how life tells a story. Alright, so now I have to go get him. If this crime does not happen, does Spider-Man become a crime fighter? Man, they gave him space. I see a whole lot in the way of paramedics. Now, you know, no one trying to do any of that, right? And we are CGI. People say CG. Uh, when I was growing up, the term was CGI. So I like to stick with CGI. It's computer-generated imagery. There are uh, technical uh, milestones that need to be met in order to pull off a lot of this. Getting all that swoopy with the camera angles... You're going to need fully CG environments to pull off. There were efforts uh, made by James Cameron. I think he came up with a script. Probably had a storyboard here and there. Of a version of Spider-Man. I think to be shot probably... I think the, the, the concept in around 94. Possibly could have been like a 95, 96 film. And at one point, it's like, hey, Michael Bean can be Spider-Man. Now, it's not going to be the Spider-Man of high school. But I, I know that the computer work was not what it is now. It really wasn't that far behind in many aspects. In the mid-90s, you could still do a, a pretty decent amount. I th and with James Cameron behind it, I mean, if he's directing, you you got to think that it would have actually been pretty good. Hmm. You know, we get, get a fairly thrilling chase out of this. He's spawning up the goon. He's tearing up Uncle Ben's car. Spiders might be allergic to bullets. I don't know. Spiders don't get shot a whole lot. All right, that car is really wrecked up now. Can't be using that one to impress MJ. I do not like the way how the the efforts were made to retcon this into Spider-Man not having the origin he thought he had. In Spider-Man 3, I think that was one of the things that really had people... Uh, a bit torn in that oh okay so this guy that he chased down the guy he let go the guy who we thought shot Uncle Ben and stole the car you're saying had an accomplice who actually shot Uncle Ben and only this guy got in the getaway car and now now Peter knows who he is oh but you've seen my face See my face. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? Peter's picking up on this a little after the audience. 
all the stuff was going down in like the last 30 minutes. He trips and falls. And the cops think Spider-Man did it. So Spider-Man is out on the outs with the law from the start. And that was one of the things unique to Spider-Man is that the public kind of liked him. The police, he he's a vigilante and a problem. He doesn't work with the police. So the police chase Spider-Man. And in so many other things, it's like uh, the, the police are happy to have the guy help. In reality, they wouldn't, but... The case was made at, you know, around the time of this, that the Marvel comics were more realistic. The characters had human problems, and that's something that Stan Lee championed for them. And all the characters of which he's credited of co-creating, that's right, he doesn't seem to create any characters, he co-creates them. But they then end up in a situation with Christopher Nolan's Batman films where Batman is not really working with the cops. He, he works with Commissioner Gordon in secret, and he's pursued by cops, and it's like, it's kind of BS. Batman's not supposed to be getting chased by the cops. It, when I initially saw that, I was put off. All right, so still has got real potential here, yep. Come on in for the test. Green Goblin shows up, wipes the place out, right? Let's see what your exoskeleton can do. Uh, you know the honest of the the costume designer prop master this is more of a prop maybe than a costume you have to make something that looks really inferior and stupid because you need this to, to look like it would get totally dusted by the green goblin it needs to look impractical and dumb and something the military wouldn't want and it's just clumsy the guy can't react and yeah, you can see the real potential on the battlefield for this thing, right? Something of a cheesy transition there, and we got that extra that's in everything on the far left. Not Carl Weathers in the background. Peter has already graduated high school. We are not doing the Spider-Boy movies here. This is Peter moving on quickly. And it's been a difficult time for you, but I want you to try to enjoy this. Man, it's Norman showing more attention for Peter Parker than his own son. Can you blame him, Peter's? Something of a success story. He's probably heard the rumors of the fights at school. Think this kid has some potential. Sort of the smart kid of the high school in a way. A rather small graduating ceremony this looks. Alright, so you have a, a, I'm assuming, billionaire of a chemical company in the least, right? With some kind of bioweapon division. And you're Peter Parker. Yeah, you know, like, is this maybe a job potential here? Internship? Something? I mean, you could work this in, but instead, Daily Bugle photographer. It just seems like he chooses a not the most uh, apparent path, you know? I think we're kicking a lot of time through this movie, man. Like, how close were they to graduating at the start? Has he been Spider-Man for... For a bit here. Two weeks they test. So uh, some weeks have gone by. At the least. It's got to be uh, two weeks, right? Miss them a lot. Man, Aunt May does not look as old as I remember her looking. I think this actress is still alive. I mean, yeah, okay, she looks... She looks well into 60s, okay, but... Yeah. I thought, I thought she looked more decrepit for some reason.
if I recall correctly, this movie came out, I think, in March. I think this came out before the typical summer blockbuster season, because I was, I was in school at the time this movie came out. And, you know, it kind of caught everybody off guard. And it came to a point up until the C word canceled the movie theaters for good, right? The, the summer blockbuster movie season was getting to the point where it was like March through September releases. I mean, there was a time where it was like August was a dumping ground of bad movies. That summer was over, that they gave up. But it kept expanding both directions. It didn't seem to matter that the kids were in school. Cool swoopy shot right there. Thinking you have to have a helicopter or a hell of a jib crane setup, right? Pull that off. Good transitions here. Very, very comic book esque. Okay, his man could be a woman. It's strange that we're getting the interviews. Oh, uh, Jim Norton. I didn't realize Jim Norton was in this. Jim Norton, one of the guys being interviewed about Spider-Man sightings. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's getting the word out, trying to trying to get the PR going, get the people on his side. Um, the guy's guitar case has spider power. I don't buy that Peter could have made this costume. J.K. Simmons. The greatest casting choice in all of comic book movies. And I will fight you on that. Yes, I realize Heath Ledger's Joker turned out to be amazing. Yeah, okay. But, I mean, this guy, he just, he just straight up born to play JJ, right? And in the in the brunette wig, I'm thinking, that's Elizabeth Banks. I I didn't realize she was in this. Um, I saw, I was like, what, what would it, was she all in, in before things, you know, and saw that she had creds and had no recollection of her being in these. Bill Nunn, Radio Rahim. I like to think of him as kind of love interest from Sister Act. You get the right amount of J.K. Simmons in this. I think this is his coming out party for the public. I think most people were not that well aware of him prior to this. I think he was in Oz, um, HBO prison drama. But I mean, he, if you had more J.J., would it be too much? You gotta, that's part of what works with the sweet spot. You leave the audience wanting more. He's got a Jansport backpack. I think we are about to see a meme that I've been seeing a lot lately where it's like Mary Jane Watson turns her head in disgust, like has a kind of like mean look on her face. I think this could be it coming. I'm going to take your check. This guy's yelling at her. Okay. It's right as she's saying okay. That's the freeze frame. That's the meme. And people are like... I I think the reference there is it's like... A, she's You're supposed to be thinking she's turning around to chew out the girl that you're looking at. Um, your girl catches you looking at some other girl. Ah, like hands off. I think that's what people are doing with the meme. She's ashamed to be a waitress. She's got the trench coat covering up the waitress outfit. Why would Peter be that put off? Oh, 
Oh, you're calling him Pete. She will come to call him Tiger in um, Spider-Man 2, and boy, did that hit me with the feels back then. She's kind of sort of seeing Harry. So there is a bit of a love triangle angle. <clears throat> Certainly had to do some kind of shooting in New York, right? He's roommates with uh, Harry. You will come to find that with Norman's passing, Harry adopts his look. He, he gets his hair. He wears the suits. He inherits the wardrobe and the stylist. They mention Dr. Connors. Yes, there is a one-armed Dr. Connors in the Tobyverse. That shrewd uh, viewers may have may have been speculating could be the lizard. But they end up doing the lizard in the sort of reboot uh, franchise, you know, with... Uh, Oh, gosh. Andrew. Yeah, Andrew Garfield. Find my own work. Come on. Why are you turning this down? Are you dumb? Hmm. You know, um, we got a newspaper here. Maybe Norman Osborn left the newspaper that he keeps looking at. Left it on the counter. Now that gives me the idea. To pull off Spider-Man's superhuman agility, you probably do need a, a f some fair advancements in CGI. Good pictures, but he doesn't like the angle of Spider-Man being the hero. Crap, crap, mega crap. I'll give you 200 bucks. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Hmm. There you go. Have, have uh, Elizabeth Banks give you the check. Get out of here. Ellie, he even goes to 300. Tells, calls him Atticus because he's defending. It's like he's the attorney, Atticus Finch. Some poll said he was the greatest cinematic hero. Let's give Elizabeth Banks some lines. Can you recognize her? Uh, he seems to be getting kind of friendly. I can see that you're a photographer. Kind of looks down at it, 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 the inference there, innuendo. We're supposed to be checking out uh, not the camera hanging his neck, but maybe something a little bit lower, a little bit below, below the waistline, sunshine. Oz court board meeting. Look at the the face on Norman here. Oh, I'm having a hell of a time. I know you guys are going to try to make some move to remove me from the board, my own company. So I think they sold the company here. I mean, he's expected to resign. So this is a little bit before he shows up and uh, vaporizes them. My, my, my mistake. I should be on top of things, right? It's my company. We're going to get the contract. What's the problem? You guys sold anyway as things are on the up? 
you put a guy on the board named Max. Come on, what do you expect? World Unity Festival. Jeez. You're out, Norman, and then um, comical tea, coffee sip right there. And grins turning a little evil. Oh yes, Macy Gray, sing for us among the CGI balloons. Did she have two hits, maybe three? I think there was one that maybe I didn't think was her, but... This might have been one that she made for this picture. And another relation to the Batman films, uh, particularly the first one, 89, okay? We had a parade. We had balloons in that movie too, didn't we? And yes, she's doing the cultural appropriation wear. I'm not sure if that's what we decided that is. You know, do you get canceled for wearing the uh, Japanese-inspired uh, dress with the hair done like this? Does does that cancel the fake redhead today? It was kind of a popular look uh, around this time to dress up a bit like this. Um, there was a small fad window of the, the Asian... Wear on the white girls. Uh, look, Macy Gray's up there singing an original song made for this movie, and that it's similar in the vein of Prince. Hey, we have we have a pop star doing a song, and we have the balloons, right? Oh, spidey sense is tingling. Spider sense singular, no longer business. TDK, hardly. Nissan Foods Cup of Noodles, still going strong. It's our glider. Interesting enough, a few months back there was a guy gliding through uh, Times Square, I believe. Not to this height, but off the ground. It's coming our way. Cackling. That is a very potent uh, little bomb there. Handheld bomb can wreck like that. You know, grenades are always overhyped in films. There's Stan Lee on the ground grabbing the grabbing the little kid. No time to switch into Spider-Man, but amidst the chaos, I can still save some people. Oh no, Mary J, watch out for all that clearly foam concrete. You know what? Today's movies, you don't see a whole lot of that breakaway um, foam-painted set stuff, do you? I think because they just go... They go so full CGI in places. Now, cynical board vaporation right there, vaporization, it, it does rub me the wrong way because they turn into cartoon skeletons. But I feel like they do so to be like the Evil Dead. And also, Spider-Man, he just threw himself against a foam wall. In reality, that would be on the ground, and he would have just fell on the ground, but we're tilting the camera to make it look like it's the wall. Now, being I'm watching this 1080p stream from Stars, you can see the mouth of William Defoe in this mask better than most of the way you could on in a DVD, for that matter. And of course, in theaters, you'd be able to see it uh, to some degree. I always feel like uh, the fast motion of the projector never really quite worked out when blown up to full size in a theater. So maybe it would be a little tough to see him. I don't have any idea what the hell that's a float of right there. Yeah. 
do what you do best, Kirsten Dunst. Scream. Is that how they, she got the role? Hey, we need you to scream in peril. He doesn't need you to say watch out. He's got spider sense. Can't quite crash, but you jacked up his glider to the extent that it certainly would crash. Yeah, evidently some rooftops have uh, proposals going on that you can interrupt if you're Spider-Man. Not um, super thrilled with his costume in this. The eyes are not the shape you'd find in the comics. I think that from what I've seen of it, I haven't watched the movie yet, but um, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, that really seemed to nail the costume. The big white eyes but people uh, were pretty pleased to see the mcu spider-man in the trailer for uh captain america civil war where the eyes had a mechanism in them allowed them to change shape though it, it kind of did an iris type thing like on a camera i don't think that spider-man should have a mechanical costume i'm not thrilled at all with the iron spider prospects of adding the legs to him none of this nonsense crazy about her you know you never made the move now i'm asking her out yeah you're right Gotta wait for these two to get in a fight so I can swoop in and steal the girl again, huh? The Osborne Penthouse. Here's the side effects, the paranoid delusions. It says the goblin's actually talking to him there. When you get rich enough, you collect masks from Africa. Totally. I mean, this guy has quite the collection. I kind of like the concept of him communicating the inner monologue through looking in the mirror at himself. And it's not some computer trick. It's actually him... It's Norman, played by William Defoe, but when he looks in the mirror, he acts as the goblin talking to himself, and it's not bad. Not a bad idea. Does it seem a little campy, though? I think maybe, it, it's particularly at the point of this, you needed some camp in your comic book movies to provide some levity for humor.
And what else does he have as a as a template to look at here? We need somebody that goes over the top, like Jack Nicholson, right? That's your villain performance to of the holding the standard, right? So need something of similar. It gives him a good chance to make the grimacing face. Daily Bugle, the flat iron building, I believe. Rebranded Daily Bugle, huh? Copyright the name Green Goblin. And I like this look on his face as he is getting that stogie like I'm a genius. It's slander. Spider-Man was saving them. Now, in print, it's libel. I keep getting those mixed up. Green Goblin just wrecked your office. Now, do you know who the bad guy is? Man, JJ right here saving Peter Parker's ass, not giving him up. I knew you two worked together. These are the weirdest conclusions to jump to. Sleeping gas, that's not a thing we need in a superhero movie anymore. Still eating popcorn. I kind of went down the wrong way. You're a murderer. This is kind of our uh, dialogue that looks like a Power Rangers episode. Fortunately, there's not a lot of instances of this where we just get them on a stage, throw, throw up a, a backdrop, and then we have them talking. Was it necessary to take the eyes out for the goblin costume for this? Or I guess maybe he still has the uh, the sort of like lenses in there, but they they're only visible. They're best visible in this scene than really prior. But it is a bad look to have the hero, his mouth doesn't really move, and we're trying to carry on a scene that is entirely performance dialogue driven. Yeah, I kind of feel like, yeah, okay, so that's what we did. He he has multiple lenses, he's working on the eyes. And so to try to get make it seem more like William Defoe's actually here, I'm going to pull, pull some of them off. Hey, it's me. Hey, like I forgot your name. I feel like a lot of months are passing by in this movie. Soap opera said you need acting lessons? Come on. Can 789 get you a cheeseburger in Manhattan? You know, you think about this. Peter Parker... 
He's roommates with Norman. Uncle Ben's dead, and so Aunt May's really sidelined. So if Aunt May's supposed to be a a central figure to Spider-Man, she isn't so much in this movie. I think, in a way, Aunt May gets the kind of treatment we see out of Commissioner Gordon in the first uh, four Batman films. Is it Pat Hingle who plays Commissioner Gordon, and does it matter? Commissioner Gordon, I I mean, I had to rewatch those films fairly recently to even realize Commissioner Gordon was in them. You know, nothing serious happens with him. Aunt May has a bigger role in Spider-Man. Or rather, Spider-Man 2 for sure. I think she get she get kind of kidnapped in this one, like in little things like um, here. This is the scene that got the women on board with Spider Man and some of the guys because Kirsten Dunst wet t shirt or wet spaghetti straps. What did he do to that guy? He punched him, picked him up, and dropped him? To their credit, I think this film came up with an iconic movie kiss. And one of the last of such. I, I think maybe you get iconic kiss in The Notebook. 2000, was it 4? I think. And then, um, can't really think of anything after that. So this is one of the most comic, or most iconic kisses in a movie, particularly in the 2000s. And I think this scene here drove a lot of the the cross demo interest in Spider Man. Not necessarily making comic books less niche. Comic books thrive on appealing to the comic book reader and not trying to get more people interested. Unfortunately, it's about the point where Disney bought comic books that I feel like they didn't make comic books anymore. They just tried to find a way to make characters not white men anymore. But yeah, the upside down kiss right here. Good luck trying that with your gal. And so, so trusting of her to put the, the hood back over the mask, right? Instead of pulling it down all the way, finding out who he is. Hey, this could be my way to drive a drive a stake between the relationship of her and Harry, try to get her interested in Spider-Man, then I can tell her I'm Spider-Man, and then what do you know? Oh, I think we're going to see some CGI flames here in this building on fire. Gotta save my baby. Not your baby, my baby. I will admit that a lot of these Spider-Man swinging into action scenes look better than I remember. I'm not saying they look uh, fair dinkum, but better than I recall. Spider-Man being heroic, but keeping the action with the um, the people outside. Unusual choice. You're under arrest, but... Maybe you should go rescue somebody, and then um, come back and we'll talk. See, it, it kind of works to show to tell that story from outside, because he's going to go back in the building for the trap with Green Lantern.
Yeah, I don't really like Spider-Man putting up his arms in sort of fright of things falling on him because he has the spider sense. So, you know, that, you, you know, like when someone throws a ball at you and you kind of turn sideways and lift your leg up all pansy like, it's not a good look. Spider-Man doesn't need to be doing that kind of thing. What kind of toys does Green Lantern have now? Oh, the uh, awkward aerial here. That's a shot that you kind of see brought up. And it, and honestly, I don't like that. The pose he's making. He looks weird. Um, and I don't like Spider-Man's build. He, he's got a very small torso. And it's just... Even thin, he looks a little chubby for Spider-Man. Oh, Norman having some issues. The goblin's taking over. Thanksgiving dinner. So, we have gone from maybe May to November at this point in the film. Moving along. I don't think that the other Spider-Man films cover as much ground. Given the circumstances, you gotta give Norman some credit for keeping it together. Keeps up appearance as well. Spider-Man swinging it into action for the dinner. In a way, Green Goblin's kind of... Um, he may not realize it, but he's scouting who can I kidnap for ransom purposes. How quickly can Peter Parker change out of, in and out of this costume? You know? Oh, he's dripping blood. It's okay to be a slob if you're brilliant. That's what I tell myself. CGI blood splatter. Looked awful. The walls are bleeding. Seeds in brackets. Not sure how much time passed by there. I'm thinking a, a little bit of a ways. Had to sneak back into his room when they're not there, changing the costume, go get some cranberry sauce. Check out that bird. She's kind of getting on his bad side here. You, you going to slap my hand, lady? Norman knows something's up here. Caught, caught a piece of Spider-Man with it, one of his, uh, I don't know what we'd call him, gizmos. I wonder where that cut came from. It's quite possible that, uh, Spider-Man doesn't even realize that Norman is the Green Goblin either. I mean, they're both masked, right? And in a movie, any kind of mask means you can't tell who I am. Well, this whole, whole thing is you can meet MJ. Come on.
She doesn't like your personality. She likes you because you're rich. They're like a pack of wolves sniffing out that trust fund, aren't they? And she can overhear this, which, uh, you know, it's doing Peter Parker a favor here, driving them apart. Peter should be like, yes, she's going to fall into my, my web now. Everyone heard, because this is a cheap apartment. Oh, they're fighting. It, you, that's how you know it's Thanksgiving, because there's a fight before you can even get to the turkey. Now... We're having the conversation in the, you know, keeping this mask theme going where the mask is talking both to and as William Defoe. And this is really pulled off quite well. I think that this would actually get more respect today than it did at the time. All right, we know who he is, so we are taking hostages. Remember, she just said, do the honors, say grace for us here, and then he is interrupting her during the prayer. And that's, it's kind of originally, st she's still going through the, the prayer, and he's like, finish it, finish it. And it seems kind of odd. Uh, so he was listening in on this bedtime prayer thing. Is that what's happening? Oh yeah, that's right. He doesn't doesn't take her hostage, but it scares the crap out of her. Is that it? But he does. There is a situation I think at the end where you have to take MJ hostage, right? But. He knows who I am. That's why he, get, he went for it. Hmm, interesting. But do I know who he is? Uh, I, I mean, I can't go whoop up on Norman or uh, Harry, can I? Spider-Man does have a, a decent enough motive to keep his identity secret so that you can't have the villains know who you are. They'll go after the ones you love. That's why... See, see I'm a superhero... I make sure that I love no one. Then I have no weakness. And besides, it's like I can go around telling people, no, wait, Von Fry is actually legendary badass, and just no one believes me. It's like in gross point blank, he comes back to high school. The hitman tells everybody he's a hitman, everybody just laughs. Reminds me, I think I saw Gross Point Blank playing on uh, one of the streaming uh, services. Man, I need to watch that again. I like that movie. Uh, Harry and I are over, and I like to wear green sweaters. I think this is one of those side parts the uh, the uh, Zoomers are making fun of now on uh, Mary Jane right here. By the way, Zoomers, your middle part is garbage, and you will realize this when you become my age. I'm Spider-Man's unofficial photographer. And yeah, I'm going to talk to... I'm going to be Spider-Man's wingman here.
the delivery here is so either creepy or obviously it's Peter Parker Spider-Man that if MJ had any sense, you'd think a stronger character would be able to pick up on any of this. This is too cheese. Now I'm going to creepingly, un with an unbreaking gaze, look into your eyes and tell you what Spider-Man thinks. What he told me he thinks of you. Because we're tight like that. I'm his unofficial photographer, but he tells me about all of his crushes. Oh, is this scene going on long enough? Also worth pointing out, Spider-Man doesn't need glasses anymore, but he does have contact lenses, and you can see the contacts in his eyes in high definition. Oh, Aunt May is picking up on this better than MJ is. Oh, Harry, you're a little late, and we're holding hands, and yep, it's what it looks like. I was totally making moves on your girl at my aunt's hospital room. I was going to say, is that ICU? Maybe it's not ICU. But come on, does she have her own hospital room in New York City? It's a lot of pool, isn't it? Snap out if I gotta be his dad for a minute here. She's in love with Peter Parker? Yeah. She doesn't even know she loves Peter Parker yet. Why do I have one sleeve rolled up? That's what I need. I need a kid who says, you're busy, you're an important man. And so, a big driving force behind Green Goblin's actions is whooping up on Peter Parker so that his son can get back with Mary Jane Watson. Seriously, that's that's the plot. Wake up little spider. Uh, come on, uh, weird dream sequence there. Not not necessary. You're not Superman, you know. Oh, yeah, they'll love it if we drop that name in this. Yeah, oh, smiles. Let's get a laugh from the audience for that one. You've been listening in on my moves. I know that in the comic books, it was sometime after Gwen Stacy was out of the picture, he gets in... Maybe shortly thereafter, same come. I don't know. He gets introduced to Mary Jane. It's kind of like, hey, um, friend has a, a a daughter you should meet or something. And it's like you just hit the jackpot, Tiger. She was calling him Tiger from the get go. So, being that most of the people watching this were not the comic book nerds, they probably weren't that upset with him not being called Tiger in this film. Tiger's a good nickname to Ellie. Like, if your girlfriend calls you Tiger, you're doing well. If your grandkids call you El Padre, you're doing even better. Answering machines, pay phones. Do you Zoomers know what any of this stuff is?
You know that trope of you get one phone call in prison? When they give you a quarter to make a phone call? Do they still have a payphone set up for that? Or do they say, hey, use my iPhone for a sec, but don't scroll through the photos? Mary Jane has been kidnapped. I'm telling you, he's using her as bait to take out Spider-Man slash Peter Parker and then find some way to get her back to Harry. Now, suppose he takes out Peter Parker. Does he then come up with a scenario where it's like, I'm going to take you to the Oscorp. I'm going to take you essentially to Harry. I have myself defeated by my son in some way so that you'll think he rescued you. I think that's the long-term plan here. Cable cars. Do, uh... I don't have any ambition to go to New York City. Do they have cable cars? Uh, trying to do a Weird Al version of a nursery rhyme. Not digging it. Oh, not the best looking flame. It says softly, Goblin, what have you done? This time of night, we really have uh, some school, not quite Girl Scouts trip going on the cable car, really. All right, got to get my catapult going. Here we go. And the uh, way... I know that Sony, you know, they really uh, cash big on their Spider-Man. The PlayStation 3 logo is the Spider-Man font. The Spider-Man games, the open world city swinging, those are PlayStation exclusives. Can you do that catapult move with the two webs? And I think we just had CGI slippers fall off of Mary Jane. Oh, we're giving him the Batman dilemma. Who are you going to rescue? Man, he has got to be jacked strong. Equal, equally strong as Spider-Man, possibly? Ah, yes, we saw the scenario in Batman Forever. Can you save MJ a swing and get the kids? And their coach slash teacher. I mean, we got to include them. And that could be a little neck snapping for everybody involved. Can you just not scream all the time, Kirsten? Oh, it gets obnoxious. And man, man alive does that cable car not look real. Trust me, let go of me, grab the cable car. Oh, he knows her name. Uh, maybe some playful physics right there. Oh my goodness, she would not have survived that. Is, is suppose she grabs that rail... Shoulders dislocated, she instantly lets go, falls in the water. At this height, though, 
from this fall, she'd probably survive the fall in the water. No problem. I mean, once she's land once she's holding on to the cable car, now she could probably jump off. The people of New York are, are coming to help Spider-Man. We'll see this again in the second film. Look at that unity. New Yorkers love it when they get painted a, in a rosy way in which they're not truly. So in a way here, New Yorkers just saved Mary Jane and the, the cable car kids. Oh, what is this place we're having it out in? Oh, now face reveal here for Spider Man. Got his mask torn up. Now look, Spider Sense is going to be most effective when you have the energy to be able to dodge. Maybe he has the sense, but he just is worn out. Oh really, you just want to run into the web? I would think he'd be able to just web this guy down, no problem. I think uh, Secret Wars number 8, a comic book I have, I haven't actually read because I have a 9.8 uh, CGC rating on it. I think Spider-Man, it's the one where he gets the black costume, the symbiote. Spider-Man casually takes out all the X-Men in one panel. Or no, wait, one page. One page, he takes out all the, all the Spider-Men, or all the X-Men. Here he's having some trouble with just a guy, William Defoe. How much of this uh, costume design here for the Green Goblin was actually going into the military? I mean, both these guys lack the resources to make their costumes. Can we be honest with this? I mean, how's he in secret going to have... That? He's a, he's rich, so he could have somebody do this, but who's doing it, right? Yeah, we need the spear. We need... We need a, a goblin-esque helmet. These are things required. Now that I'm looking at it, I see a little bit of xenomorph in that head shape. It's fitting because like the last commentaries I did were on the aliens, uh, first two alien movies. Now Peter Parker can figure out who he is. This isn't Peter Parker, world's greatest detective. He's not Spider. He's not Batman. Did you kill those people? No, the Goblin killed him. I had nothing to do with it. If only Spider-Man had an Arkham Asylum. I tried to stop him. He's playing him. He's playing him. But the spider sense kicks in. Really, I mean, this is a, about the best play Green Goblin, Harry, or, yeah, Norman could come up with right here. Try to appeal to him, keep him engaged. But you can't fool the spider sense. I feel like I'm waiting for that Hot Toys version of this Spider-Man all torn up with the face partially revealed sweaty. Hell, if I look it up, does that exist already? Oh, come on, you didn't have to tip the cap to him right there with the... I mean, just keep him engaged and talking. Oh, 
the knife metal on metal sound it always irks me in films but i feel like it's done so intentionally with sam raimi trying to get that um evil dead uh fun vibe into the films it, it may i'm thinking evil dead but maybe also dark man too but dark man's probably the movie that got him this job as i said look it's it's kind of a comic book movie. It's a superhero movie, but not necessarily. It's a test bed. Oh, hey, well, he, he did a pretty good job with that. Maybe he can do this. There was, there was some swinging through the city in Darkman on a helicopter. It's kind of similar. Should not have taken him home. Should have just called the cops, let them do do this here. But I think Peter was thinking, if I, if I take him back to his penthouse, people won't know he's Green Goblin. I can say, give him a little bit of a save face move. Only for Harry to kind of spoil it by, by seeing him. Now Harry has a vendetta against Spider-Man. And you, you don't dislike Harry. He seems like a decent guy. I mean, anything that got between him and MJ, it's everybody else is doing, isn't it? His dad, Peter, swearing my father's grave, Spider-Man will pay. Now you know this is setting up something. You're the only family I have. Oh, I knew it was you, Fredo, right? Who is, uh, oh, is that just the pastor of the proceedings at the funeral that Aunt May's chatting up, trying to see if he's available? Ben Parker, beloved husband and uncle. Oh, man, and a hug for Peter, not Spider-Man. Something I've been wanting to tell you. After I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Only one person who I was thinking of. And it wasn't who I thought it'd be. It was you, Pete. Pete, give me a break. Oh, look, he gets the girl by the end of the movie. This will get girls interested in seeing this. I want to see Peter Parker's face one more time. Only one man who's always been there for me. Who makes me feel... I don't know why, but they chop so many of these subtitles trying to get them on two lines. It's okay to just be me, I guess. The truth is, I, uh, ellipses, I love you. I love you so much, Peter. Oh, but not so fast. We got, we got the big kiss here. We'll, we'll give the girls in the audience that. However, Peter knows what he does is dangerous. You can't let people in. Your enemies will find out what matters to you. All I want to do is tell her how much I love her, but I can't. You can't what? I can't tell you everything. In, in the comics, it gets to the point where, like, Peter and MG are married, and she knows he's Spider-Man. And that seems like a good place for it to be, really. Like, always. I'll always be there to care and, and take care of you. I promise you that, but as a friend, right? Is that what he says? I will always be your friend. Oh, 
the twisting of the knife. MJ, you just got friend zoned. If this was real, she would be like, Peter, are you gay? Oh, now she wants to cry at the funeral. The hero has to walk off stoic, leaving those he loves behind. It's the price we pay. Great power comes great responsibility. The responsibility to not tap that ass. This is my gift. <laughs> my curse. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. Swing into action, and we are going to roll credits, and I think, uh, mm, don't remember what song they were playing for this uh, bit here. You know, that's a pretty good swing into action sequence, all in all. Yeah, the Spider-Man model could be a little more updated. I mean, there's ways to revisit this totally and get the effects in line with what one sees today's movies you, it, it would be totally doable if they wanted the patriotic uh flag i think when's there like a scene they had to remove that was in the trailers where it's like he ran by the flag he ran he runs by the american flag and the international audience isn't going to like that so let's get that out of the way but um spider-man huge huge hit 2008 money or 2002 dollars that's real people going to the movie theater. Not Disney coming up with some kind of way to twist the arm of uh, the theaters to, to get them to say that Captain Marvel made a billion dollars. You know, you have to book Captain Marvel in your biggest auditorium or you don't get to have uh, the, the new Star, Star Wars in your theater and it has to sell out. Additional suit and mask design. Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff Jr., some of my pals right there. I know they had some other uh, thing in involving the. Uh, there was a really convoluted but kick-ass animatronic type mask for Green Goblin that kind of got scratched. You can see that on YouTube. Well, what did you guys think of Spider-Man 2002? Should I do Spider-Man 2 and 3 next? Let me know in the comments below. And you know what? The yeah, the end song here. I don't remember what it is, but they should have went with uh, Hero by uh, the Foo Fighters. There goes my hero, watch him as he goes. That's what they should have went with. Take care, till next time, adios.